Okay. So, uh, stranger, as to the first kind, all that surrounds and encloses anything to prevent egress may be rightly called an enclosure. The Atitis, every, uh, very true, stranger, for which reason twig baskets, case, uh, casting nets, nooses, creels, and the l- and the like may all be termed enclosures. The Atitis, true, stranger, and therefore this first kind of capture may be called by us capture with enclosures or something of that sort. The Atitis, yes, stranger. The other kind which is practiced by a blow with hooks and three prong spears when summed up under one name may be called striking unless you the atesis can find some better name the atesis never mind the name what you suggest will do very well stranger there is one mode of striking which is done at night and by the light of a fire and is by the hunters themselves called firing or spearing by firelight the atesis true stranger and the fishing by day is called by the general name of barbing because the spares too are barbed at the point the atesis yes that is the term stranger of this barbing of this barb fishing that which strikes the the fish who is below from above is called sparing because this is the way in which the three prong spares are mostly used the thesis yes it is often called so stranger than now there is only one kind remaining the thesis what is that stranger when a hook is used and the fish is not struck in any chance part of his body as he is with the spare but only about the head and mouth and is then drawn out from the from below upwards with reeds and rods what is the right name of that mode of fishing theatesis i suspect that we have uh, thesis i suspect that we have now discovered the object of our search stranger then now you and i have come to an understanding not only about the name of the angler's art but about the definition of, of the thing itself one half of all art was acquisitive half of the acquisitive art was conquest or taken by force Half of this was hunting, and half of hunting was hunting animals. Half of this was hunting water animals. And uh, of this, again, the under half was fishing. Half of fishing was striking. A part of striking was fishing with a barb. And one half of this, again, being the kind which strikes with with a hook and draws the fish from below upwards, is the art which we have been seeking and which from the nature of the operation is denoted angling or drawing up uh yeah i can't i don't even want to butch- butcher those words uh the atitis the result has been quite satisfactorily brought out stranger and now following this pattern let us endeavor to find out what a sophist is the thesis, by all means, stranger. The first question about the angler was whether he was a skilled artist or a unskilled, uh, or unskilled. The thesis, true, stranger. And shall we call our new friend unskilled or a thorough master of his craft? The thesis, certainly not unskilled, for his name, as indeed you imply, must surely express his nature, stranger. Then he must be supposed to have some art. The Atitis. What art, stranger? By heaven, they are cousins. It never occurred to us. Um, here it says, he says, uh, the Atitis says, certainly not unskilled for his name 
as indeed you imply, must surely express his nature. But I know at, we know at the beginning of it all, uh, Socrates asked uh, if all if if the the sophist and the statesman and the philosopher if they're of three kinds, or if they're as the name implies singular. Uh, let me see if I can find the exact thing he says. Uh, yeah, it says, I want to know whether my countrymen, they are regarded as one or two, or do they, as the names are three, distinguish also three kinds and assign one to each name. And Theotesis basically says in this thing, yeah, you know, uh, they assign one to each name. <laughs> I mean, well, I guess that could be one interpretation of it um i don't know if plato like is well you know without the person here to to uh make their case it's kind of hard to make uh to make any assumptions on uh how i mean how much the I, I mean how how much uh kind of tongue tongue in cheek they're remarks are in their work if they kind of realize certain uh contradictions or i mean if if you want to say it's a contradiction maybe that the term might be too too hard because uh i mean he's the thesis is pretty much just agreeing to kind of keep the, the the uh the conversation going and you know without and then because we haven't hit any major, uh, again, contradictions in what he's saying, what the stranger is saying, and as far as the stranger is trying to express uh, or, or present his case, then I guess it's all good. Uh, let's see if we could find our place again. All right, so... Theotesis, who are cousins, stranger, the angler and the sophist? Theotesis, in what way are they related, stranger? They are both, are they both appear to me to be hunters? Theotesis, how the sophist of the other we have spoken, stranger, you remember our division of hunting into hunting after... Um, hunting after swimming animals and land animals, yes, uh, deities, yes, stranger. And you remember that we subdivided the swimming and left the land animals, saying that there were many kinds of them. Deities is certainly stranger. Thus far, then the sophist and the angler, starting from the art of an uh, acquiring, take the same road. Deities is so it would appear, stranger. Their paths diverge when they reach the art of animal hunting the one going to the sea shore and to the rivers and to the lakes and angling for the animals which are in them the thesis is very true stranger while the other goes to land and water of another sort rivers of wealth and broad meadow lands of generous youth and he also is intending to take the animals which are in them Theotesis, what do you mean, stranger? Of hunting on land, there are two principal divisions. Theotesis, what are they, stranger? One is the hunting of tame and the other of wild animals. Theotesis, but are tame animals ever hunted? Stranger, yes, if you include man under tame animals. But if you like, you may say that there are no tame animals or that if there are man is not among them or you may say that man is a tame animal but is not hunted you shall decide which of these alternatives you prefer the thesis i should say stranger that man is a tame animal and i admit that he is hunted 
stranger then let us divide the hunting the hunting of tame animals into two kinds the thesis how shall we make the division stranger let us define piracy man stealing tyranny the whole military art by one name as hunting with violence the thesis very good stranger but the art of the lawyer of the popular orator and the art of conversation may be called in one word the art of persuasion the thesis true stranger and of persuasion there may be said to be two kinds the thesis what are they stranger one is private and the other public the thesis yes each of them forms a class stranger and of private hunting one sort receives hire and the other brings gifts the thesis i do not understand you stranger you seem never to have observed the ma the matter in which lovers hunt the thesis to what do you refer stranger i mean that they lavish gifts on those whom they hunt in addition to other in inducements uh the thesis m most true stranger let us admit this then to be the amatory art the thesis certainly stranger but that sort of uh hireling with uh whose conversation is pleasing and who baits his hook on only with pleasure and exacts nothing uh but his maintenance in return we should all if i am not mistaken describe as possessing flattery or an art of making things pleasant uh theatis certainly stranger and that sort which pro professes to form acquaintances only for the sake of virtue and demands a reward in the shape of money may be fairly called by another name the thesis be to be sure stranger and what is the name will you tell me the thesis is obvious enough for i believe that we have discovered the sophist which is as i conceive the proper name for the class described Changer. Then now, the thesis, his art may be traced as a branch of the appropriative acquisitive family, which hunts animals, living, land, tame animals, which hunts man, privately, for hire, taking money in exchange, having the semblance of education, and this term sophistry, and is a hunter after young men of wealth and rank, such is the conclusion. The thesis, just so changer let us take another branch of genealogy for he is a professor of a great and many-sided art and if we look back at what has preceded we see that he presents another aspect besides that of which we are speaking hmm. Yeah, so, uh, like, uh, for the stranger, uh, like, the, the only difference, really, between a sophist and a teacher seems to be, in, instead of a, a semblance of education, a, a teacher would actually, uh, I guess, be able to provide real education, but, uh, you would, you would have to kind of acts or, or try to figure out well what's real education uh in plato's time they they had less uh information or of a, or a, an understanding of the world than we have now so you could kind of say that every thing every not everything you could say whatever was taught during his time whoever was the teacher could not have had a lot of correct knowledge per se i mean if if they knew like if they had um you know a hundred things they were going to tell their 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 pupil it, i mean at least at least what, like 90 percent of it must have been false i mean i mean you would have to know each know the teacher and know what they're teaching I mean, you know, Plato had things that he had wrong. Aristotle had things that he had wrong. I mean, each individual had to had to work on the work of of previous individuals just to make any progress. So, you know, that 
it, it's as if everybody during that time really could have been a sophist. So it's a little, it's the the way that's defined is a little odd, but uh, I'm sure the stranger will, will add more uh, details to the sophist to kind of flesh out the, the characteristics. Um, the other interesting thing was uh, understanding uh, the way that they may have taught during that time that a lot of these, well, the stranger in the way that he's uh, expressing the arguments is that the sophist is, is teaching a, an art of some kind, is is both uh, sophistry is, is an art and the sophist is, is a teacher of, of some kind. And I mean, we'll see, but it seems as if he, he's teaching an art and it, it may be during that time. I mean, you would probably have to look more into history rather than uh, this, which is more like general philosophy. I don't really, I'm not a historian, but uh, if if they're if they were teaching things as art during that time, it would be probably because well, compared to now, where we have technology, a lot of things can be kind of duplicated. You know, we kind of talk at, of of different subjects in their education and not really of different arts um, because I, I suppose um, when we're thinking about education, we're not really thinking so much of uh, the individual um, kind of creating things based on their, uh, I mean, the, the individual is creating something based on their understanding of the subject but in, in in more modern times you're more uh um duplicating uh what what others have discovered so i mean you know you have the, the subject of like biology or physics or um i don't know literature um but uh, a lot of well let's try to stick to more um hard sciences uh those 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 kinds of disciplines uh a lot of them somewhat uh, are about uh replication i mean yeah there's a lot of art in trying to discover new things but um and as far as producing or or what their uses are for the world today is mostly building mass producing a certain kind of um product which um which because it's mass produced and kind of and you're able to create duplicates because of technology you can kind of make a, a perfect copy of, of a particular pro product it kind of it's as if it becomes less of an art where uh during plato's time uh, ancient greece you'd have to make things by hand and um everything perhaps you know i i don't know I'm not a historian, but perhaps everything had more of a um, individual touch to it where um, there was no, even though two objects could, like the two things could be called a pot, it, it, there was never any two pots or two ships that were ever built exactly the same. They always had some kind of um, differences with them. Uh, I don't know, this this whole idea may not work that that well because i mean maybe they they had a, a a method of doing certain of making certain things where they they, they did they they performed the actions all the same way and, and and they came out to having the exact same product and the same thing and and uh and so they can make multiple of of multiple duplicates of of the same object through having a, the similar method rather than using uh technology and uh and robots and things of that sort um yeah but uh no nope. let's continue um hmm. do you teach this in what respect Stranger, there are two sorts of acquisitive arts, the one concerned with hunting, the other with exchange. The Atitas, there were, Stranger, and of the arts of exchange, there are two divisions, the one of giving and the other of selling. The Atitas, let us assume that, Stranger. Next, we will suppose the art of selling to be divided into two parts. 
Hadith teaches how there is one part which is distinguished as the sale of a man's own productions, another which is the exchange of the works of others. The teaches certainly stranger and is not the part of exchange exchange which takes place in the city being about half of the whole termed retailing the thesis yes stranger and that which exchanges the goods of one city for those of another by selling and buying is the exchange of the merchant the thesis to be sure stranger and you are aware that this exchange of the merchant is of two kinds it is partly concerned with food for the use of the body and partly with the food of the soul which is bartered and received in exchange for money the thesis what do you mean stranger you want to know what is the meaning of food for the soul the other kind you surely understand the thesis yes stranger take music in general and painting and marionette playing and many other things which are purchased in one city and carried away and sold in another wares of the soul which are hawked about either for the sake of instruction or amusement may not be he who takes them about and see and sells them be quite as truly called a merchant as he who sells meats and drinks the thesis to be sure he may stranger and would you not call for the same name him who buys up knowledge and goes about from city to city exchanging his wares for money the thesis certainly i should stranger of this merchandise of the soul may not one part be fairly termed the art of display and there uh, is another part which is certainly not less ridiculous but being a trade in learning must be called by some name germane to the matter the thesis certainly stranger the latter should have two names one descriptive of, descriptive of the sale of the knowledge of virtue and the other of the sale of other kinds of knowledge the thesis of course stranger in the name of art seller corresponds well enough to the latter but you must try and tell me the name of the other the thesis he must be the sophist whom are whom we are seeking no other name can possibly be right stranger no other and so this traitor in virtue again turns out to be our friend the sophist whose art may now be traced from the art of acquisition through exchange trade merchandise to a merchandise of the soul which is concerned with speech and the knowledge of virtue the thesis quite true oh man so now they're saying sophist teaches virtue and then uh, i'm pretty sure um plato doesn't go over what virtue is exactly in this work um but but yeah i mean if the sophist is supposed to be uh teaching virtue uh that's what he's educating people in but He's not, uh, but it's a semblance of education, not actual education. So then it can't be actual virtue. Um, I guess the only issue would be like, well, I mean, it, if it's not virtue that he's teaching, there's only like the only other options would be like, either he could be teaching, he could be teaching vice. That'd be like the the obvious at the end of the ve uh, of spe of the spectrum. But it's like if you're trying to teach the semblance of virtue then you can't really go all the way to vice because then it would completely be not virtue would even be the semblance of virtue um although that you know if you it could probably depend on how you define it but i mean he could also be teaching something that seems like virtue but is not actually virtue which is kind of an odd Thing to teach because it's like the results would need to be vice for it to resemble virtue but not actually be virtue or maybe the results could be something more neutral like nothing actually happening 
which I mean isn't virtue, but it, I mean, it's not vice. I mean, if you're teaching people kind of not to be vicious, but also not really giving them proactive ways of being virtuous. I mean, is that teach is that not teaching virtue because you're not going the full way? You're only kind of giving a half measure. And then it's like the other thing the stranger says is that uh, a merchant goes from city to city to to gather certain things to sell, you know, either was it the food for the body or food for the soul. And if the sophist is also doing the same thing, which I mean is implied here, then you'd also have to wonder is it is he saying the sophist is getting this information from others who claim to have virtue but don't actually have virtue uh who claim to be able to teach virtue but don't actually know virtue to be able to teach it and the sophist is just picking up on the on, on what these people are teaching and just uh spreading that um it would it be knowingly or unknowingly you know and i mean cuz i mean it, it, i guess you you would have to have one individual would be like the first sophist but then you would have to wonder is this individual not uh, in, uh, claiming to teach virtue but isn't being uh genuine about uh whether they actually know what they're teaching but i mean what they're teaching must be uh good enough to be able to trick others in such a way that that others would would pay them for uh what they're teaching but again you know in ancient greece it's like they they didn't have a lot of facts a lot of things were very were still uh unknown so i mean you know you anybody could really claim to be a teacher just from finding out or or thinking about some thought that having any kind of thought that they haven't seen others have or haven't seen in the world that you know others find entertaining or or somehow significant they'll it's it's it shouldn't have it wouldn't be a problem back then to kind of just go about spreading those ideas um without any kind of uh um conflict or drawback Unless I guess they were uh, saying things that were against the gods, <laughs> like Socrates does. Um, so yeah, um, we'll see. We'll see uh, how this develops more.